Hello, Hello. good evening, everybody. Hello, Bradley. Um, Hi, thank you, Jane. everybody, for joining us this evening. Bradley's going to let everybody in on all the different social medias on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'd like to just welcome you all to Adran's UK Live. Tonight, we're really excited. Tonight, we've got our first live guest with us. And shortly, we're going to be introducing a gentleman called Mark Blake, um, a lovely man who's a trichologist. Mark is a really successful salon owner with salons in Cheltenham, Gloucester, and Sirencester. If you ever get a chance to actually go and visit them, please do so. He's licensed from early in the morning to late in the evening, and he's really there for the customer's delight. He really looks after every need that you actually have for all your hair needs and for any hair loss needs as well. He was a previous winner of the L'Oreal Colour Trophy and a former finalist in the Wales and West section of the Colour Trophy as well. And he's actually been British Hairdresser of the Year. He's an internationally recognised Holly Street trichologist and he's the go-to -to trichologist <coughs> excuse me, for all of the UK's top hairdressers. They all send their clients to him if they're actually having any hair loss problems or any hair loss issues at all. He's also got a huge growing clientele of celebrities, pop stars, influencers, and really high profile patients as well. So he's really the man to go to if you've got a hair loss problem and you need any advice. He's also a consultant trichologist and educator for Weller. So Mark's experience takes him and his knowledge takes him around the world talking about trichology, helping people and actually teaching other people who actually want to become a trichologist. So tonight we want all your questions coming through. I'll let Bradley take over in a second and he'll tell you all about the different places we're on tonight where you can find us and about all your different questions. So without further ado, I'll just pass you over to Bradley to talk to you about all the technical things. <laughs> Thank you, Bradley. Thank you so much. Um, we are everywhere tonight, Jane. We are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We've had some things go out to Twitter as well. Um, it's all happening. And it looks to me like it's oh, all live. So <laughs> hello, everyone, wherever you are tonight. If you can't see us, um, please do get in touch. Uh, if you can't see us on one platform, please do try another. It's facebook.com slash trendcowigs, all one word, or we are trendcowigs on Instagram. If you want to find us on YouTube, just search again for trendcowigs, and there's a live presentation, live stream of us, and it should look exactly the same as it does on screen right now for us. Fantastic. So everybody's got that opportunity tonight. Please think about any questions you might like to actually ask Bradley, myself, and of course, Mark, our guest speaker. So any questions on hair loss that you might be concerned about or actually worried about, want that little bit of advice. Maybe you want us to pinpoint you to a salon where you might be able to go to to actually get some help with hair pieces or wigs. All of our salons at the moment are currently closed, <clears throat> but we are actually doing WhatsApp calls to any customers so we can see you face to face organize wigs for you and conversations with you live with one of our stylists so they can actually look after you as well. So there's always help out there in somebody to actually help you for any of those particular needs that you might actually want. <coughs> Tonight our main conversation is all going to be about hair loss, whether it's just thinning hair. It's maybe that you've actually been a bit worried, a bit anxious. We've had um a year almost now are going through three different lockdowns. Um, a lot of people have been furloughed, people have lost their jobs. And with this anxiety, there's a lot of stress, and that can actually go on to lead to actual hair loss. So we wanted to actually invite Mark along this evening so we can actually address all those issues and those issues that you might be concerned about if you have had COVID and you think you've actually got long COVID and it is actually affecting your hair growth to some degree. So myself and Bradley, we had this conversation and this is where it's actually led us this evening. 
to actually talk about all things relevant with hair loss. As you know, we're a hair replacement company in the UK, one of the biggest in the UK, uh, Durant, and we can actually help you for any of your needs. If it's a full head wig, if you've got alopecia, you've got full long-term hair loss, if you're going through chemotherapy and you actually need some advice and help, there's always somebody there to actually point you in the actual right direction to where you actually want to be. And how much longer before we bring Mark in, Bradley? Well, I think it, I think we can bring him in any second now, Jane. I'm just trying to sort something out for our followers over on Instagram at the moment that are having some technical Okay. Issues. Yeah, um, for the last so few weeks, we've been wow. going out on a new stream, and this new stream is giving Bradley nothing but a little headache every Wednesday evening. <laughs> and we get a little problem every Wednesday with Instagram. Um, we've got somebody, a member of staff, who's actually following the Instagram to actually look at all the questions for us and follow it. So Bradley is just trying to actually sort that one out at the moment. I'm glad that's his job and not my job because I'm not very good on the technical side of things. I'm quite you, happy Jane. to sit and talk. But on the technical side of things, that's when I actually fall apart as well, really. Um, you can see behind me, we've actually got a nice selection of different wigs and hair pieces tonight that we can actually take a look at at the end of the evening. So if you're new to Adrans and you've not actually been live with us before, you're going to actually be able to see what some of the wigs and the hair pieces are like that you may be able to actually order from us. I'm just going to reintroduce ourselves again. For any of you new viewers that have actually come on in the last few minutes, just so you know what's actually happening this evening. Welcome to Adrange UK Live. I'm Jane Kelly and I've got my co-host Bradley with me this evening. Bradley is going to be looking at all of your questions. Any questions you've got, please pop them into the comments boxes and we'll actually try to cover all of those this evening. And we're both really quite excited. Um, for the first time of us actually being live, we've got a guest with us. And our live guest for this evening is Mark Blake. Mark Blake is a renowned trichologist. He's a su very successful salon owner with three salons in Cheltenham, Gloucester and Sirencester. He was a previous winner of the L'Oreal Colour Trophy and he's an internationally recognised Holly Street trichologist as well. Um, Mark has got a huge list of clients, anything ranging from pop stars, celebrities, influencers, and also high profile patients as well. He's, he's also a consultant trichologist for Weller. And with his line of work and the training and the teaching he does, Mark does travel quite extensively around the world teaching people all about hair loss and trichology. Mark's trademark is really good and his trademark is for the hair you deserve. And I think everybody with a hair loss problem is always striving to get the hair that they really want and the hair that actually makes you feel good about yourself and that you're actually happy with yourself. I think we won't delay it much longer and I'll get Bradley to actually bring Mark in. Mark is quite likely to have a little guest of his own with him and he might have a little friend called Harry that might pop up onto the screen as well. Um, Harry is quite quiet but he might like to actually see what's <laughs> going on. Um, he's, he's a very loyal pet to Mark so any second now we're going to bring Mark back into us. We will bring Mark in just in a second, Jane. So unfortunately, we are having trouble okay. with Instagram tonight. It doesn't seem to be playing ball by any stretch. Um, but if you would like to continue watching and you are on Instagram, please jump across to join us on Facebook. Um, it is facebook.com forward slash Trenco Wigs, all one word. And you'll be able to see the show in its all its glory, the full screen, everything there, including Mark. If you continue to watch on Instagram tonight, you may have some trouble seeing everybody on the screen. That is the only issue. So I repeat, that is facebook.com forward slash Trenco Wigs. Um, and without delaying any further, I think, Thank should we you. bring Mark in, Jane? I think so, yes. Let's bring him in. Okay, here we go. 
Hi, Mark. L thank you for joining us this evening. Lovely to actually see you. Yeah, Mark's you joining too. us from his beautiful home up in Gloucestershire. Um, Mark and myself have got similar accents and when we invited Mark on we did actually think we might have needed an interpreter for all of you so you can actually understand us. As we start talking our accents will probably get a little bit stronger but we'll <laughs> actually try to actually control those for you. So thank you once again Mark for joining us this evening and joining me and Bradley. Um, we wanted to ask you along this evening so we can talk about hair loss, what's actually happening out there. A lot of people are actually getting quite anxious and actually suffering with different kind of hair loss issues, thinking that it might be COVID. But before, and we've got Harry in the screen now too. Harry's just popped into the picture. Yeah, if, so if anybody you can, can actually it, see it, him. It's not me, it's him, Patsy, <laughs> the fire. So. <laughs> He's got rather hot. He's got a lovely fur coat on, isn't he? <laughs> He's gorgeous, absolutely. Mark, can I ask, um, you've had such a long career in hairdressing, 40 years in hairdressing, which is, you know, a really good career. It's spanned, you know, four different decades. So you've seen huge changes in the industry for hair and also in hair loss as well. Um, how long ago did you start to train as a trichologist and what made you actually start training to be one? Actually, well, before we first start, on your intro, you did say I was a British hairdresser of the year, which I'd love to have been, but I'd better correct that I wasn't. But you're not. You were actually in the category. I know. I actually got that a bit wrong. <laughs> but just and case, I thought there's going to be a few people telling me that. Yeah, I, I would love to have been, but I was never that good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> Almost. I, uh, I, I started training as a trichologist probably about six or seven years ago, I think it was then. Um and, you know, it, it was one of the best things I've ever done, really, because uh, it, it really refocuses the way you look at hairdressing and the, the way you look at your clients as well. Um, it, it, it's a totally different thing. It takes you out of that safety sort of net. And, and when you train to be a trichologist, you have to learn to write again, which, you know, I always say the <laughs> worst thing about writing is normally we can all write. But usually only happy birthday or merry Christmas. And so after that, the handwriting goes a bit dodgy. And so when you're doing sort yeah. of two hour exams and three hour exams or whatever, uh, and somebody's got to read it and not be sort of deciphered by GCHQ, um, you, you've got to get your act <laughs> together, really. So there, there is a lot of uh, relearning to do, which is great. It, it's a good discipline. So. It is really, isn't it? And it's actually retraining yourself, as you said, it's like seeing clients, every hairdressing client you see, you probably look at them completely different now, isn't it? Because yeah. you actually look at how their hair is growing and what problems they might actually have without them even realising they've got an issue with their hair. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things I do uh, actually for Wella when I teach. Um, I, I try and get people, I, I adopt a bit of a, a Sherlock Holmes sort of thing. So I'm scanning people all the time and I'm looking for clues. And although we do a, a differential diagnosis when we actually do the uh, examination, but what I'm trying to do is pick up clues. So when I'm shaking their hand, is their hand cold? You know, is there a possibility of a thyroid problem? Is there pit into the nails? Is there lateral thins to the eyebrows? Do, do they have uh, cat's hairs on them? Because, you know, certain preparations... Uh, cats, um, it, it can kill them. Uh, so you're looking for all these clues constantly. And, um, you know, as I'm talking to them, this is all going through my mind and picking this up. So when I do get into a consultation, and even with a, a client when I'm a hairdresser, um, I'm, I'm, I'm like a sponge. And uh, I always say it's one of the things that I'm... Uh, I'm a bit like a sniffer dog at the airport uh, because I sniff, I sniff everybody's hair. Uh, I'm sniffing for bacteria and when did they wash their hair? And uh, a, a lot of the pop stars and people I look after, um, I can't always get the, should we say, the correct information or they're in too much of a rush. So I've got to try and get as much information as quickly as I can. And then when I can do the questions, I can hopefully sort of cross check these things, but I need to be getting uh, any th information that's going to help me really. So it's, it's a bit. Wow. So, by, can I ask then, by sniffing somebody's hair, what's that going to actually tell you? I mean, it's not a very pleasant job sniffing hair. <laughs> if, if that one of the, the courses. <laughs> 
I do actually. I get the whole. I go around everybody's sort of uh, scalp and I sniff and I actually say to them, right, you washed it this morning. You got. You didn't. You washed it three days ago. You washed it five days ago. You didn't wash it for a week. And then we're sniffing for bacteria. And it, it, it's it's trying to get hairdressers to. No, I'm not asking them to sniff their clients' hair, but certainly if somebody's got infection you can start smelling infection from quite a distance away. And that's something that probably needs to go to uh, the doctors. So it's, it, it gives, gain, uh, gains me valuable information. And also, uh, it, it's, it's quite a, a good thing for hairdressers to realise uh, about washing their hair and the bacteria there. Because there's this big thing about, oh, no pooing, as in no shampooing. But, you know, I see more problems with people who don't wash their hair than who do wash their hair. And so, uh, you know, there's lots of myths to dispel as well, really. Okay. Yeah, that's it, isn't it, really? Because, I mean, some people wash, and, you know, when you're looking at guys in particular, they'd be washing their hair every, like, every day, twice a day, maybe. Yeah. And then when you actually look at females, they might be just like the once a week because they go and get it blow dried once a week and then they don't touch it at all, really. Yeah. So I'm guessing you need to do it regularly, isn't it? Yeah, we, we sort of have a fauna that lives all over us and, you know, that sort of, uh, it can grow, it's a, it's a yeasty thing and so sometimes you can get sort of this irritation and certain foods you can eat can uh, exacerbate this and, and especially if you're living in, uh, in London, say, um, there, there's a lot of dirt and uh, sort of smoking various things when you're on the tubes and that sort of lays down so it's all going on to you and the more oil you have that that's sticking to it and then people start itching and then they scratch and that causes you know a, a minor wound that can get infected or anything like that really so yeah it's uh, there's there's so much information to be gained from using your eyes and your senses really that are all around you I mean, it doesn't take over from doing a proper um, physical consultation. But what I'm trying to do is get people to think, right, what have I got around? What can I use? Um, and, you know, the, all these tools are to hand. Wow, it's quite interesting. So how long does it take to actually train to be a trichologist? Well, I trained with the Institute of Trichologists and it's a, a two-year course. And um, then I did another two years where they um, you become a, a member of the Institute. You're an associate um, of the Institute after two years, and then you're a full member after another two, so four years altogether. But, however, there are other companies now also out there doing uh, the training and uh, sort of, you know, uh, as good and in different ways. And you can pick it up and leave it. So that's the one thing about it. All these companies now are realising that they have to do it that, fit in with people's times um, because you can yeah. dedicate that time so you can do a, a as fast as you want or as slow as you want really to actually do your training so there's quite and, a few um, oh. <laughs> sorry jane um, i was just going to say so is there quite a few trichologists out there then there is, is quite a uh, saturated a uh, you know, I've been on a mission to get hairdressers to train to be trichologists. So I've probably recruited more trichologists to come into the industry uh, than anyone else now. And so uh, that they've, they've realized that this is the next big thing. Um, you know, it's the next Moroccan oil, the next GHD. And mm -hmm. basically, if you don't have hair, you don't need hairdressers. So you need hairdressers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's in their interest uh, to actually get you know their clients to have as much hair to get it to grow as quickly as possible, as thick as possible, and and need the sort of hairdressing services really. Absolutely. So, how would you go about trying to find a trichologist then? Well, most of the companies now, like the Institute of Trichologists, uh, you can actually mm -hmm. search online. And um, it's got an area, so you can see which uh, trichologists are, are, are to near you. Um, some of the other companies are now coming on board. I think really, if if not, you just send somebody like me an email, say where you are, and I can point you in the right direction. Uh, I know most trichologists in the sort of UK now, and uh, it, it's quite easy to sort of point you. In. You. There is a big change in the trichology uh, industry because it's a, it's a bit like hairdressing in a sense. It's unregulated. 
So um, you need to find a proper qualified trichologist because somebody could, yeah. Bradley, you could set up tomorrow and say you're a trichologist. And at the moment, nobody could really stop you. But you could also do that in hairdressing and nobody could stop you. But then nobody would keep coming back to you because when you weren't producing results, um, that wouldn't be the case. Yeah. So they'd come back to you. So, yeah, you have to be a bit careful who you go to and what you're paying for, really. Uh, it's it, it, there, like every industry, there's people that shouldn't be out there. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's doing your research, isn't it, really? Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking to somebody like you, a company, yeah, somebody most like people, us, a company like us, we, yeah, I yeah, most we'll people, actually always pinpoint days, somebody. Yeah they have um, a reputation and uh, you know most of my work comes from uh, hairdressers uh, around the UK and uh, and doctors um, because yep. you can't really get much uh, on the NHS at the moment they're a bit busy as we've all realized and um, uh, losing your hair is not one of their concerns uh, although I always say this that um, it, it's a pity that GPs don't take a little bit better uh, approach to it because uh, they take the approach that yeah. alopecia is not uh, life-threatening and I take the approach that alopecia is life-changing and that's what mm -hmm. they need to do yes. is take the approach that alopecia is life-changing so it does cause a lot more problems really. It okay. does definitely I mean they have such GPs they have such a small amount of training when it comes to actual hair loss in those problems. <clears throat> I know a few years ago I actually went and done a talk for my GP in their surgery because she knew what I was doing and I went and spoke to all of the doctors all the nurses in my local surgery so they could actually pinpoint patients to know where to actually go and I think if doctors only had that little bit of knowledge just to pinpoint that patient it is going to actually help them because you know hair loss is life altering for people isn't it really oh yeah and when it doctors might not actually do, kill them but it is like all through doctors do realize that they can actually send us patients it's great and so that means we can take away a lot of the um the, the issues for them or just send them the people that need the sort of proper medical attention really and that's really good because I was going to ask you if you can see them on the NHS um, and that is something you could get referred to on the NHS well, if somebody could actually go privately but you're better off going privately really. Yeah always and, and most uh, trichologists won't do uh, anything on insurance or anything like that at the moment. Insurance companies haven't quite recognised it, uh, the, the private medical insurances. So it's a bit like acupuncture and things like that and physio. Uh, it's on the cusp at the moment. But the whole world is changing, uh, hence why it's such a great time to get involved with it. And, uh, you know, I, when I first trained, I think I, I was probably one of only, I think, 100 uh, trichologists uh, in the UK and so um, I straight away put I was in the top 100 trichologists in the UK and so it's you know you can sort of bang around these things really to start you off and you know especially when the numbers are sort of low that they're, now they're they're taking in more people than they've ever taken in before probably because I'm going around the country doing all this and uh, making sure that uh, people are signing up and and getting trained on it because my mission is to get hairdressers um, to talk about hair not holidays and I, I, I don't mean that badly for a lot of hairdressers that they don't all talk about holidays but <clears throat> If you talk, if you do the 80 20 rule where you talk 80% about hair and 20% about whatever, um, it's amazing the clients just love talking about their hair. Of course, they do, isn't it? And they're interested to know what's happening with it, how they can improve it, and all the other little things that go along with it as well, isn't it? Really, it is. So, what do you what would a client expect if they were? Say we were coming to you for a consultation for a first 